into the program through friends in the building and my wife, she belonged to the cooking class before and she would bring home the, the different recipes and I would, tr I would try them at home on my own and started to like it so I figured, hey, let me find out when the next cooking class or the next session is and I filled out the paperwork and started, started going and I'm enjoying it. Um, the volunteers are awesome. They're all volunteers. Nobody's paid. Um, they're very helpful. They give us good hints. They'll bring in, um, try to bring in stuff that we ask about. Um, the chef we have is awesome. He's not afraid to ask any question. No question is, is weird. Um, any question we have, he'll he'll answer. If he can't give us the answer, he'll find out for us and help us try and figure out. Okay, what's the best way to do this, or which which way is the best way to do that? It helps that I have friends in the building that go. It makes it a little bit smoother. I can kid around with them, help them throw ideas around. Like Cliff and I, or Lori and I, or Allison and I will sometimes get together and talk about different things and try and come up with with different ideas to help each other because some of us have this the same disability but at a different level so we'll understand um, where each other's coming from and we'll try and sit down and figure out okay this is working for you but this is um and then we'll then we'll sit down and say, okay, this works. It's a good, it's a good program. I say that. My name Welcome. is Waishi Kuri, and I'm right excited to here. I became involved yeah, with the program the the through uh, other activities that I was participating in in the community <laughs> when a friend of mine uh, suggested that we look at doing a little adaptive cooking to help uh, me increase my knowledge base, become healthier, and uh, do a little socializing at the same time. Not only have I built uh, my confidence base in just being able to go to a kitchen, grab whatever ingredients, whatever foods are available, uh, and cook it up and have a healthy meal, I've also learned just how important programs like these are because they're designed to aid uh, every segment of population from the visually impaired to those that are elderly living alone for reasons of um, uh, the, the, a change of life and or perhaps maybe going through a stroke and cooking for one instead of cooking for two or five. Uh, the elderly uh, can definitely uh, benefit from this program. The youth should also be included in learning how to approach how good healthy eating habits and I'm looking forward to, I'm excited about the prospect that this program can have when it expands through the rest of Ontario. Coming into the program I've gotten a little um, more interested and involved in trying new things and being a little innovative. You don't have to follow a recipe to have a great meal. Since I've joined, um, this is my second time doing it, I've learned different things um, actually to improve my cooking habits uh, to be you know a little healthier and, and a little easier. Um, and I didn't know that the, there was a lot out there for um, on how to we could adapt for us. Um, <laughs> um, I love to entertain, so uh, learning different things from two people to you know seven, eight people um, is great. <laughs> okay. I personally like the like the one touch can opener.
you have to take it to the next level. Like when you're talking about fine French cuisine or or uh, a little com really complicated dishes in regards of temperature, in regards of size, in regards. So cooking can, cooking can be very complicated, but also can be very simple. I mean, it's just what you want. Um, so I needed uh, myself um, a few weeks, a few lessons to actually understand what is it what to find a medium between. Like because on the other hand, you don't want to do the simple stuff. Like you know, you know, I mean, um, because I think starting meeting everybody here, I think they have it from the first time I met you guys from until now. I think the level increased already in the sense of what I what we can cook. It's not anymore just open a can and you know and just heat it up. I think uh, there is some people already, and then I also get questions. You know, what about this? What about that? So it's it's. I think it went a little up in the in, in, in the levels. And the interest I feel like, and uh, you know, and, you know, I mean, I have fun with this. Like I go in, and um, you know, it's nice if people are interested. It's nice if if you get the right questions asked. It's nice if you can show something and. Um, it's just one of these things, it's just nice to do. So sometimes when you go to groceries here, and I do it frequently, I go, I don't buy always whatever I need sometimes. The best for you sometimes is to go to grocery stores things, and when things are on sale, yep. like a can like this, I think sometimes it's sell for 70 cents or yep. 60. You can buy half a dozen of them because they last in your, in your house for up to six months to a year on these things. This is so economical, it'll feel an army for almost nothing. <laughs> oh, no, and then, and then especially this one says mixed vegetables. You got in there carrots. You got in there carrots, potatoes, beans, peas, celery, cabbage, onions, and it's all that's in there. Wow. And it's pretty good for you. Yeah, and I made 2015, also I would wait for it when it's on sale and just buy it. The ingredients basically for the for this soup here, the minestrone uh, meatball here, and then we have a no name beef broth. Mm -hmm. Low sodium. Uh, low sodium. Yeah. <laughs> less, so, less, less sodium than the average uh, beef broth. Like, but this is like uh, this is a little bit more sodium. But uh, the challenge with beef broth is if how should I say it? like to make a real beef broth, you have to get bones and cook the bones and like. I don't know if it's worth it in the sense of, of the long term, because this one obviously has more salt than if you would do it at home, because somehow they have to keep it alive, this thing. Like they have to, and this one I don't think doesn't need have to be in the fridge. So you, and it needs more salt to make a shelf life. That's what, the, that's what, in some sense, a different word would be preservatives. But you need to put some, some kind of salt in it to make things alive. Because no company would succeed if they have to sell a product in two days. So the, the, the product like this has to stay stay uh, on the shelves for a while before somebody buys it, all right? Is it good for you? In some sense, no. Is it bad for you? No, either. So uh, it is a good product as long as you don't every day put some beef broth in whatever you... Don't open and drink it like a glass of milk. <laughs> Let's put it this way. That's not good for you, all right? No. But you can cook with it. It's, it's nothing wrong with it. Right. And the last product is this one. I use it myself. Quite a bit. It's meatballs. Oh yeah. Oh, oh. yeah. Very, this one are very very good. In some sense, six meatballs have less salt than any of these products here. So you get six meatballs you can eat and have less salt than anything. So it's pretty good. All right. This one has a lot of iron. A little bit fat, uh, fiber, lots. Of, I think it's a good product. Meatballs. So you use like I use it myself. Yeah. I started with the cooking class over a year ago and it's benefited me absolutely, absolutely the most positive it could ever benefit me. I've enjoyed absolutely everything about it. I absolutely love it. The friendships, the people, the fun time, the great times we have. What we had to what we've got, I mean, I think I've learned exponentially even more. I've learned a ton. How to cook in multiple, like multiples, like crock pot cooking that you can separate into different meals for days that you're just absolutely crazy busy. Being taught how to budget, cook on a budget 
is absolutely the most wonderful thing on the planet. How I found out about the program was Anna and Brenda, which is two volunteers that began this project. They emailed me directly and said, oh, I tell her, do you want to be involved in a cooking thing? And perfect. Of course, I'll be there. No worries. It's, of course, very informative sessions. How to manage your lifestyle on a quick budget and even uh, get to know some people as well in wheelchairs. It's part of social ability as well as some knowledge of from um, personnel who volunteer their time and expertise into helping people like me or anybody else in wheelchairs who really do not know much about how to cook for themselves uh, through a very limited budget. I heard about the adaptive cooking class from Mary Ann, who works at the CNIB, the Independent Skills Teacher. And she told me it would be a good opportunity doing all different kind of recipes and learning to adaptive cooking. And I've really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed trying the different foods that normally, because of the budget, I wouldn't have purchased. And to be able to try them, because sometimes you're in the stores and you see these different items like kale or uh, there's some I can't even say the name, so I wouldn't have tried them. And I just enjoyed having the opportunity to do that, to try these new things. Because when you're on a budget, you don't buy things that you think, okay, I'm alone, I'll be stuck with it, who's going to eat it? I don't like to throw away food, so that just wasn't an option. But this, I think that was the best part for me so far, is being able to try the, the different variety of foods. And like the times we, we've had made stir fries and salads, I just come out feeling healthy. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, at home I'm more inspired to eat the same way. Like, uh, I get in, stuck in a rut. I guess being alone, you don't get inspired to try things. But now I sort of throw every vegetable into things. And I, uh, it's, like I say, it's inspired me. Where before I just felt like I didn't care what I ate. I just got to make filler, just something to fill me up. It didn't matter people say the doctors worry about most about people who just don't take the effort and make tea and toast and then their nutrition and their health is no good. So this course, I had thought this week, I thought for any disability there is out there, this course would just be such a wonderful opportunity. And all the volunteers and the chefs, they just give up their time, and it's just amazing how generous they are with their time and their effort, and, and they're really caring. It's like they really care about it, and that's just awe-inspiring. So we got here two three-pound carrots, which we have right here, and uh, carrots is one of these things that's very good for you. Thank you. Yeah, it's... Uh, for, uh, they always say, uh, that's why rabbits never have uh, glasses on because they have carrots. All right, and then the carrots, you can do two things with carrots. A sip, that's like a, a medium sized carrot that says you have two to three pounds, and this would be around two to three pounds, I think, no? Yeah. I think that would be a large amount, you just, you can have it every day. Because mm -hmm. this salad is good, as you cook it, you make something else and just add the salad to it. Use what you need and the rest just put it in the freezer. Yeah, yeah. it can and freeze. Put it all when you need it again. Yeah. 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 Once, you cook, once you cut them and put them in the freezer, how long, how long will they keep? Well, a few months. Everything, everything stays in, in the freezer a few months. Like you can put, for example, meat, you can put over a year in the freezer. Uh -huh. Is it recommended? No. no. I no. think the recommendation is always maximum six months for meat, uh, six months for majority of stuff in the freezer. Can it be longer than six months? Obviously, can it be up to two years in the freezer. Nothing wrong with that. 
but they're not recommending it. As long as it's wrapped tightly. Just, pardon me? As long as it's wrapped tightly, but like and, you said. And even better if you, if you can uh, take the air out. Yeah, like they have these little vacuum machines. Uh, yeah. You take the air out of whatever and then freeze it, it takes even longer. If you don't have a vacuum sealer, just use the head off your vacuum. <laughs> Use this, or just surround wrap it very tightly. Yeah. Like it works too, but it, uh, it's better if you take. But you don't need to have it. You can just surround wrap it very, very tight and put it in the freezer. Because <laughs> the longer it stays in the freezer, there's still less of uh, how should I say, not quality, but the, the value of the product dissipates. <laughs> all right. The meat, for example, if you have it more than six months, can can have some fr frost bites on it. Oh, yeah. Frostbite means there's little white spots when you open mm -hmm. the meat. There's right. little. Uh, uh, is it bad for you? No, you can eat it, but it just tastes funny. Like, yeah. It tastes like this. It doesn't taste yeah, like Yeah, because it's taking some of the flavor out of it. Yeah. All right, let's go to carrots. See, see carrots? Cut them up. Chop it if you well, want. There's different ways to cut it. I cut it up and then I. Chop it. The, the other thing you have to have to make sure the cutting board doesn't move around. You know, like Maybe. this one, it's very dangerous. And the other thing is. Poor Nick. There's still a knife, there's so sharper it is, there's still less likely you're going to cut yourself. Oh, really? really? So if you have a really sharp knife, you, it's, you're less likely you're going to cut yourself. Why is that? Maybe yeah. Because the reason you're cutting yourself is if you have a dull knife, you're squeezing it out and the knife slits, and then you're cutting oh, yeah, yourself. Oh, yeah, because it's exactly. Oh, it's okay. All right. So if your knife is nice and sharp, then you're less likely to cut yourself than with a dull knife. Yeah, especially yeah. this recipe is a very simple. Yeah. You put everything in. It says here, add the, bring it to boil. Also add water to it, okay. sugar. Okay, cooked. Uh -huh. uh, tomato soup. Vinegar. Right. Yeah. Sugar. And mustard. And dry mustard. Yeah. And Worcestershire sauce. Everybody likes Worcestershire sauce. Canned tomato soup. Yeah. So you put all these ingredients. Yeah. You, in you put all these ingredients. You put it together, and it looks like. Can you see this here? And oil. No. 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 We can't. We can't. We'll, we'll hit, pass it around the room for everybody to see. <laughs> <laughs> the wife is calling. <laughs> and there is one. It looks just like this. Oh, wow, that looks so good. Oh, everybody want to try some? And smell it. Oh, Lid on, put it back in the fridge. Yeah, and if you don't want it after three days, freeze it and then pull it out whenever you feel like. So it's very and it's very good, very tasty. You got red peppers, onions, green peppers, carrots, everything in here. And you know, I mean, this is very, very, very economical. I mean, no matter how um, how low our budget is or how limited our budget is, this is something that you can oh. afford. And like, it is so yummy. Oh, Brenda, is that good? Really good. Oh, it's so good. Whether it's beef for chicken, yeah. how do I know if I'm if I'm cooking in the dark or I can't see it? How do I know it's ready? If you do a steak, if you do a steak, for example, right? All right, I'll show you a little trick. Here, give me your hand. Take your thumb and push it over here. That's well done, meat. It's cooked all the way. Okay. Go like here. It's made in well. See here, you feel the skin losing a little bit? Yeah. So push your skin again. That's tight. That's cooked. Now this one, push it, that's medium. Okay, it's soft. Yeah, this, push it, that's medium rare. Okay, I understand. So this one is rare. Rare. <laughs> Can you show that to Adrian, please? Alright. Make sense? Yep. Yeah. I, 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 I,